Valentino lay in state at Campbell's funeral parlor. A great many of them really had had a lot of feeling and affection for Valentino. So it was a crowd filled with emotion and with hysterical emotion that you weren't at all sure what they might do. Seven days later, the funeral. Ben Lyon took charge. I received word one day at the Ambassador Hotel in New York from the florist in the lobby that they had had a phone order from Miss Paula Negri to place a blanket of white roses across the top of the casket six feet by four and in the center in one foot letters in red roses P-O-L-A, Pola. Well, let's make it look like an opening night for her, a premiere or something. I said, under no circumstances will that will those flowers be placed on that casket? And they weren't, and of course she was furious and put up a terrific fight, and I said, they're not going on. And uh, the whole thing turned out to be, if you remember that she fainted and fell down and had to be carried, it was a, it was a premiere for Paul Negri. Among the pallbearers were Adolf Zukor, Marcus Lowe, Rex Ingram, Douglas Fairbanks, and Joseph Skink. Natasha Rambova did not appear. There was to be a second funeral in Hollywood. Alberto Valentino joined the train for the five-day journey. We went across country and it was amazing. You probably, you can't believe me, but I was awake early in the morning because it was just dawn and the train stopped. And I was informed that was a, a group of people which had come with guitar, mandolin. The great majority were Italian living here in this country. And they, they just asked me permission if he, they could sing and play some of the Italian song for the memory of It was very touching. It was the biggest funeral Hollywood had ever seen. At the Church of the Good Shepherd in Beverly Hills, stars paid their last respects. Skank collected two one million dollar insurances on his life. They didn't even buy him a grave. He's living, he's living, he, he's resting in a, in a, in a in the box that belonged to June Mattis. See, she had, she had free, whatever they call those drawers where they put them in the wall for herself, for her mother, and she had bought one for her husband at the time, Balboni. And, uh, so when Rudy died, says, if, if you have no grave for Rudy, you can use the spot of Balboni's, and he's still there. Valentino was 31 years old. His death gave him a status he had never sought in his life. He had become immortal.